also um, alpha fetal protein. Alpha fetal protein is put out by the, the fetus. And um, so you should have, never have an elevation in the AFP. LDH, what is LDH? That's in our liver, right? That's mm -hmm. some, one of the labs that we come back for. Yeah, it's a it's a lab that we see with our, our liver. Okay, so here we have a germ cell tumor. Uh, it could be an ovarian seminoma, also called a cis germinoma, or it could go down and it can be any of these. If uh, it could be an embryonic carcinoma. If it has embryonic tissue in it, meaning you're born with it, then over here it could be a teratoma. Over here it could be a cholangio, a, a choriocarcinoma, or a yolk sac tumor. Okay, so there's there's several different differentiations of a germ cell tumor. Be sure you know this chart for your test. You'll see that uh, almost all of them have an increase in your white blood cells because the body is trying to fight it off. And so you'll see an increase in your white blood cells. Now, if it's malignant, then um, if it's malignant, it could appear to be cystic with multiple septations. Now, if those septations are wide, it is definitely malignant. If they're thin, then the thin septations, then you have a higher incidence of it not being malignant. So you have a hemorrhagic ovarian cyst. What is that? A hemorrhagic ovarian cyst. Hemorrhagic means bleeding. Bleeding. So I can have a corpus luteum that has bled within itself and it would be a hemorrhagic corpus luteum, okay? It could appear to be complex. It could have septations depending upon the age of the blood. When it first bleeds, it's going to be hyperechoic. As the blood settles down, it can have septations or and it can turn anechoic. Okay, but then uh, parts of it you could have nodular components of it also. Uh, a benign cystic teratoma. What's a teratoma? The more. It's a germ cell. Germ cell. It's a teratoma. teratoma. Now, if it's benign, it's a dermoid. Now, they still take out the dermoids because they can turn malignant. Mm -hmm. Okay? Torsion. Torsion of normal uterine adenoid. Okay? How, how, what is torsion mean? It's a twisting. So, that twisting can cause me to lose either the drainage of my ovary or my feeder of the ovary, okay? Uh, appendiceal abscess, that's appendicitis, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, you can even have stones in your appendix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are those surgically removed? Yeah, they're surgically removed because if they burst, they burst, they don't question it, they just automatically take it out. Because if it were to burst, then I would have peritonitis. And if I get peritonitis, I can go into sepsis and die. Okay, so they always take it out. Okay. A, a TOA. What's a TOA? A tubal ovarian abscess. The fembri are fused to the ovary. Now, when we look at this on ultrasound, we can't tell the difference on what we're looking at. It just looks like one solid giant mass in the adnexa, okay? So your best bet is to take a cine, 
superior to inferior, take another semi, semi either medial lateral or lateral medial. Okay, be sure that uh, you do your image. If you're going to do a semi, you're going to do sagittal, medial, lateral. This lets the doctor know that you're going medial to lateral on the right side, okay? If you're doing transverse, transverse, it's superior, inferior, right side, okay? You're telling the doctor that the video clip that you're sending through is superior to inferior, okay? Is this allowed? Transverse, right ovary, superior to inferior. Regular imaging, this is not allowed. Okay? A cine, it is allowed. Regular imaging, it is not allowed. Okay? Because every image that you do will have superior to inferior. Where are you on the ovary? Okay? I either want it to be superior, mid, inferior. Not superior to inferior. If you're seeing it in the clinic, do not do it. Okay? If I hear of anybody doing this, they're going to come to my office and sign a counseling form. This is not for still images, this is not acceptable according to ACR, okay? You're gonna see it in the clinics, do not do it. Bad, bad habits. That's just for seeing. This is only for seeing. A still image, you have to tell specifically where you are on the ovary, okay? Ben Todd right now is going through ACR accreditation. Mm -hmm. She's having a very difficult time finding that perfect exam. The only ones that she's been able to find came from students. Mm -hmm. Because once you get out into the field, you mm -hmm. get bad habits, you get lazy. Mm -hmm. Okay? And she's, had, and she's having a hard time. Yeah. And she, okay. It has to be a perfect image. A perfect exam. Focus, depth, gain, annotation, anatomy, everything has to be perfect. She's looked for three weeks for an abdomen and can't find an abdomen that wasn't done by a student. Hmm. And uh, what about the doctors? They don't mention if the uh, 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 pictures uh, are not. They could care less. Oh. They, just more is not better for the radiologist. There's no reason to take 15 images of her right liver. Mm. You know, how many is our right liver? Our dome, mm. our hepatic, mm. our portal, mm. our mm. kidney, mm. gallbladder. Mm. Five at the most, mm. five at the most. So 12 images, yeah, you're gonna come to my office. If you take 12 images on her right liver, that tells me that you have no idea what you're doing, okay? If you take 12 images on a right liver, you don't need to be here. You need to be doing a cashier somewhere. <laughs> Where you, have, you, you work in quantity. Because what happens is those 12 images, if they go to court, the doctor is responsible for all 12 images, okay? So if you give him more, that's just gonna make that's just gonna make him angry or her angry. Okay, because you're giving her you're giving her more of a liability. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Why would they do that if they do more than one Like why they have to take more pictures if they're they're okay? Yeah, if there's pathology, yeah. We're gonna take more because we have to do with them without measurements, with them without color. But a routine, regular exam is only four or five images. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay, so if there was pathology, then 
Well, then this would give you a print. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. you've got to do with and without color, with and without measurements. You know, you've got to do all of that. So here is a, um, an example of a liver that has metastasized uh, from somewhere else, okay? So that is called a Kuchenberger. Mm -hmm. If it starts in the ovary and it metastasizes somewhere else, it's called a Kuchenberg tumor, okay? Now here, you don't see any hepatic veins. You maybe see part of a hepatic vein. You maybe see part of an IVC. But because of the metastasis of the, because cancer has spread to the liver, then it has caused the liver to be very heterogeneous. Okay? Here I have ascites in Morrison's pouch. My right liver, my right kidney, so I have ascites in my right upper quadrant or Morrison's pouch. Turner syndrome. If you have a cystic hygroma that did not resolve in the late second trimester and it's a little girl, you have a higher chance of giving birth to a, a, a little girl that has Turner syndrome. Turner syndrome has 45 chromosomes. Most of us have 46. We either have an XX or an XY. XX are little girls, XY are little boys. This one is born with an XO, so they're, they're missing a chromosome. These little girls are short in stature. They have a webbed neck. They have a weft neck. They have like a barrel chest, like uh, the like a person with emphysema might have. Um, they have amenorrhea. Amenorrhea means no periods because they don't have a full ovary. Now they can go through uh, HRT. HRT is uh, hormone replacement therapy and they can throw themselves into a menses, okay? But basically they have infantile sexual development, okay? Infantile sexual development. Now you also have testicular feminization. That is with little boys. 46 XY, so it's a boy. You're gonna have uterine or and vaginal anomalies. See, it happens to little girls too. Uh, you have normal breast development. You have little or no pubic hair or, or armpit hair. Mm -hmm. And you'll have inguinal or abdominal testicles, okay? That is called Crypto orchidism. Crypto orchidism. Now, if I look at a testicle and the sac is empty, the scrotum is empty, the first place I'm going to look is the, in the inguinal canal. But because the genitalia and the renals form from the mesonephric duct, then sometimes the, the testicles will travel up with the kidney. I've seen them at the inferior pole of the kidneys before. So be sure you follow that milk line. The milk line comes from your nipples and comes down and ends up right here. That's called the milk line. I can have accessory nipples along that milk line and I can also have testicles along that milk line. So, a higher incidence of, of cancer. They, they can move them surgically down into the testes, into the, into the scrotum. 
if they the longer they stay up there, the higher the incidence of having a malignancy. Okay, it's called crypto orchidism. Okay, so I can have a uterus that never grows, it always stays infantile or pre pubic, it, it never grows. Or I can have vaginal atresia, meaning my vagina is never developed. 